from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to help you meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 37. There's a saying in English that it's raining cats and dogs. Now our last two episodes were about cats, and today's show is about dogs. Well, another saying is that dogs are man's best friend. Well, I like to think about the first person who shared the kill of his hunt with a wolf, or maybe it was the other way around. Either way, humans and wolves started a relationship way back in time that has resulted in every variety of dog on Earth today. As usual, we have some video clips to share, but first there's some unfinished business from earlier episodes. We shared some idioms about horses in one episode and about cats in another. I asked viewers to share other idioms or sayings about these animals, and I have a couple to share with you today. I forgot about the horse idiom I heard so much as a child. Hold your horses. That's what adults would tell me and my siblings when we were impatient. Just hold your horses. It means to wait patiently. Now the other idiom has to do with cats and I can hardly believe I forgot to include it in the previous episode. It has to do with letting or not letting the cat out of the bag. When you're told something to keep secret, you may well be reminded not to let the cat out of the bag. In other words, don't reveal the secret. If you do, you may be accused of letting the cat out of the bag. Now we have some very powerful instruction in today's program, but I won't tell you what it is now. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too early. We also have some video clips about dogs, but I won't play them right now. You'll just have to hold your horses. I know that not every culture esteems dogs, but you should know that the culture in the United States esteems them very highly. It's hard to find a block in any town or city or farm in the country without dogs. They're at the top of the list for pets people choose. That brings us to some vocabulary as we begin our unit on animals. The word pet means there's a close emotional and often physical relationship between an animal and its owner. Both dogs and cats usually enjoy being petted, having their stomachs rubbed, or other physical connection with its owners. Now, cats seem to fear abandonment when an owner starts packing, and dogs can get downright sad when their owner's away at work for the day. Now, the word domesticated or domestic is uh, similar to pet, but there's nonetheless some differences. A domestic animal is no longer wild. They often depend on humans for the needs they otherwise would meet in their habitat. Their learned behavior is distinct from their natural impulses. Domesticated animals usually have a function in the eyes of their owners. They often produce food or some other tangible product. They sometimes provide very personal services, like a seeing eye dog or a guard dog, yet they may lack that personal relationship which would make them a pet. Cattle, horses, goats, pigs, all of these are commonly domesticated animals. Then there are wild animals. They may or may not have experiences with humans, but they follow their natural instincts. They can be as calm and as peaceful as a deer or as aggressive as lions and tigers or wolverines. We can learn so much from wild animals as they teach us about our natural environment 
separate from the heavy influence of humans, as well as how human actions affect our planet. Now, the opposite of wild is tame. So let's review briefly. Do you remember the difference between these kind of animals, pets, domesticated, and wild? Well, we feature all these kind of animals in this unit. They all can help elevate English proficiency because all have some kind of relationship and experience with animals. Plus, they can illustrate how scientific inquiry can be applied to living things, an example of life science. Now, at the risk of letting the cat out of the bag, I'll tell you that we have a video clip about dogs coming up after this. What's a horse doing on ramping up your English? We're galloping toward a new unit, animals. So we're in the country meeting some horses. Horses are just one of the many animals that will help viewers ramp up their English. So funny. Our Mr. Cowboy, you loving that? Coming soon to RVTV Voices, a new unit on ramping up your English, an educational support program for intermediate level English learners from all language backgrounds. So how can horses help you improve your English? Watch Ramping Up Your English to find out on channels 15 and 115 in Ashland and channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon.